Hello and welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So I have here another 10 pens currently inked this week. I think let's go through these briefly one by one. We'll go through them in a little bit more detail and then we'll do a writing sample. So from left to right, we have the Anoto Magna Classic and this is in the chased green or jade. Uh, we have the Anoto Magna Classic in the chased amber. We have an Anoto Magna Classic, but this is the Colt Pen's Christmas Cowl. We have a Danny Trio, and this is the Chinkin Cage Momata on Takumi. We have a uh, lovely uh, Tweeko Seishu Dragon in red, a Tweeko Seishu Dragon in green. We have a, a Danny Trio, and this is the Ancient Dragon in higher tan. We have a Danny Trio, and this is the Moonlit Grass. We have a Mr. Cypress, and this is the Maple in the Woods, and a Mr. Cypress Orchid uh, Leaf. So I think let's take a look at these pens in a little bit more detail. So this is the uh, first pen here. This is the Anoto, and this is the Magna Classic model, which dates back to sort of around about the... Uh, War time, the Second World War, uh, I believe um, that this is a classic design of a pen that uh, the the more modern Anoto uh, remade uh, in the Magna Classic. Uh, it's a beautiful pen. Uh, you have the Anoto logo uh, coin or cap finial there. Uh, you have quite a, a strong clip. Uh, these are uh, quite strong. They they are silver clips. So you do have to be a bit careful not to try and force these clips because they will bend and they will not go back, at least as I understand it. I've not had any uh, fail on me, but uh, Anoto are always very careful to, to mention that to you. Uh, the material here is a beautiful chased uh, green. So the chased is this uh, sort of uh, chain link pattern, which is sort of backfilled with a, like a silver... Uh, paint so that it sticks out a little bit and I do like these uh, chase patterns a lot I do prefer when they are backfilled like this and and not just left to show the the pen color uh, I know on a lot of the black chase models that Anoto do they typically do not fill it in with with silver paint or gold paint so um, it, it distracts a little bit, I would say, from, from the design. I, I think it would look better if it was backfilled. Uh, but this is a beautiful pen. I picked this one up secondhand. Uh, this was uh, from uh, Royal Izod. Uh, I did replace the nib, as I've mentioned in the past. It's a number 7, uh, 18 count gold, medium nib. Uh, the reason being is that the previous owner uh, really uh, seemed to prefer a crisp italic uh, nib. And they ground it so much that it really, you couldn't, you could round the edges off and make it a little bit more stub-like, but it still was difficult to to write with. So I, I replaced the nib. Um, these are cartridge converters. These are not the plunger fillers. So I do have a cartridge converter there. And uh, it, it is, uh, it's a nice pen. Uh, it's a somewhat light pen for me. Um, Probably not for, for most people. Uh, it does actually have a um, brass insert in that uh, barrel just to add a little bit more weight. Now, uh, this one doesn't have a brass insert. This is, again, the Anoto. You can see there the cap for new coin. Uh, Magna Classic in the chased amber. And uh, they have done a little bit of, uh, I want to say a little bit of backfill. Maybe they haven't. Um, I think they have slightly. Um, it's just like a, almost a, a light dusting there on, on that chasing. But this material really is beautiful. Uh, I do like it a lot. And I've always wanted one in an amber. And uh, I now have one. So uh, I was able to, to pick this one up uh, secondhand as well. But it doesn't have uh, the brass uh, insert or into the body or barrel. Uh, it has a number seven size 18 cat gold medium nib there as well. 
cartridge converter. Uh, you can post the caps on the Magna Classics. They will post perfectly fine. And uh, I typically do not, uh, as you know, but uh, you can do if you so wish. I know actually a lot of people that have Anotos that do post the caps. So that is uh, something that a lot of people do prefer to do. So, uh, and I completely get that one. Uh, the next pen here is the uh, Anoto. It is a Magna Classic design, but it's a Colt Pen's Christmas Cowl. Again, you've got the Anoto coin finial there in the uh, cap. Uh, but this is a beautiful pattern. Really, really loving this. And uh, I believe this was a 22 edition. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but this was 9 out of 10. So there were only 10 of these made. Um, but I picked that up this year, and uh, it came with a steel nib. I, I could get it with a gold nib. Um, again, th these are cartridge converters, and you can see I've written that one almost dry. So uh, for me, I I've got to refill that one, and I will refill it because I have now uh, an extra three bottles of the ink that I put in this. So uh, I'm really glad that I managed to get that. Um, and there you see the uh, cap will post. I want to actually thank um, Derek at Stonecop because he actually messaged me and said, I'm a bit of a penabler because he really liked this ink and it's a Colt Pens exclusive and they were out. And uh, he he messaged me and said he just, he picked up uh, a number of bottles. And I was like, how is that even possible? Because I put myself down on the notify me when back in stock email and I haven't received one. And I went and checked, and lo and behold, they have stock. So I bought another three bottles. So uh, as much as I'm a penabler to Derek, Derek is a penabler to me because uh, I was only going to get one or maybe two bottles, but then the FOMO kicked in. There are only 30 mil bottles, and I just thought, I've got to go and get them. So uh, I, I nearly, nearly went for four, and I thought, nope, nope three more bottles is enough so i've got three and a half to four bottles worth of uh that ink so i will re-ink that pen up very shortly the next pen here is the danny trio and this is the um chinkin and chinkin is this beautiful sort of gold etching that you get um it, it reminds me of back in the 80s and 90s you were able to buy these uh black like canvas uh, sheets of card which had foil under them and you would scratch it, it would have a picture imprinted on it but you would scratch out over the the um, picture and reveal the gold underneath and it reminds me very much of that it's a beautiful uh, beautiful work of art and I do love that I have this one in my collection I did pick it up at a London pen show uh, one year I think it was March Maybe in October. No, I think it was probably March 22, maybe October 22. Uh, but uh, it's a great one. I picked it up from um, Twiss, Pens, uh, and Vince. Uh, so uh, this this is a good one. They typically do have some Yurushi on their tables. Uh, Vince is the Northumbrian Pen Company, and Twiss, or John Twiss, is the custom pen maker. But they do diversify and, and have other pens on their tables, they have Le Bans, um, uh, Danny Trio, sometimes some Visconti's as well, uh, special editions, and I I'm always on the lookout for Yurushi. So I had picked that one up, and uh, really glad that I, I was able to add it to my collection. I do like some Danny Trio pens. Uh, this March it was in 23. I'd actually seen these these two in October 22 and I decided I wasn't going to buy them because they were too much and then I saw them again in March 23 at the pen show and I decided I've got to buy these and I was only going to buy one and then uh, I got a cracking deal uh, on the prototype versions of the pen this is the Tweeko Seishu Dragon in red, a beautiful pen, and uh, I really, really do like this. The work of art on this is absolutely amazing. Uh, it's an ebonite pen, like most Arushi pens are, 
Uh, it's got a, a number six size Yovo uh, 14 cat gold nib. Uh, it is a cartridge converter as well. So you can see there I've been writing with it. Uh, it really is a, a nice pen. You you can't um, post the caps. They're not designed to do so on, on most of the flat tops. But this is a, a really nice pen. It's a good size in my hand. It does have a little bit of a step down because the cap is flush and, and that is only natural. Uh, I know some people don't like um, step downs and some do. Um, it does have a spring loaded inner cap so you've got to push it in and twist. Uh, it has a single thread start point so that pattern is always going to line up. Uh, really nice pen. It writes really well. I, I am uh, really loving that I, I, I chose to, to buy that pen at that moment in time. And I, I chose because it was going to be difficult if I didn't buy the prototypes, which were cheaper. And uh, I would have had to choose between the red one or the green one. And uh, I'm glad that I didn't have to choose and I could just get both. But again, uh, same uh, pen. It's a Tweeko Seishu. It's just that the dragon is painted in green instead of red. Uh, and I'm quite lucky to a degree because if if I had um, seen it in a blue and a purple and an orange, uh, then I would have probably bought those as well or wanted to buy them. Uh, it has a number six size. Again, uh, Yovo 14 count gold nib. Uh, they are cartridge converters, good size in my hand there. Uh, the, the dragon here has a lot of texture to it. So you can feel that dragon a little bit of a step down. It doesn't bother me. I know some people do not like step downs, but <clears throat> step downs are unfortunately a requirement if you want that cap flush. So if, if you don't want the cap flush, if you don't mind it stepping out a little bit here, then you will not have a large step down uh, from the body to the section. So it really just depends on the pen. I, I think if it's if it's an Arushi and it's a work of art like these two, I, I think it cries out to have a seamless transition between the body and the cap. Let me know what you think, um, whether or not you think the same. Um, I, I used to not like step downs too much but it's something that i've got used to the majority of the time the step downs don't actually affect how i hold the pen and likewise i don't normally feel them when i'm writing with it uh, but i know some people hold their pens higher uh, and some people hold their pens lower and if you hold it higher than you if you're holding it around the threads then at that point yes you will probably feel it the next pen here is the Danny Trio, and this is uh, the Ancient Dragon on Hyatan. Uh, a beautiful pen. Um, I believe it is actually Aka Tamanuri, but it looks a little bit more like a Toki Tamanuri to me. But then when I put it next to some of my Toki Tamanuri Arushi pens, uh, it looks more like Aka Tamanuri. So... Uh, I, I think that these do change colour over time. All Arushi pens do change colour. So I, I think this is just a dark Akatamanuri red. Uh, it has a lot of threads there. Uh, it has a, a number six size uh, fireball nib there from Danny Trio. And uh, this one is a medium nib. Uh, you can see there. These are cartridge converters. Uh, the body here does step back a little bit and in, so you can post the cap quite nicely. Uh, I do like that on these higher tan models. I always thought initially that this bulbous area here and then the thinner area here was a little bit of a gimmick, but uh, I, I now see that you can utilize that design to be able to post uh, the cap. And, and that, I think, is an interesting... Uh, thing that that Danny Trio have done on those higher tan models, so uh, it not the the higher tan model isn't for everyone. It's quite a bulbous pen, a bit of an hourglass style of pen, but uh, I do think it's uh, a nice pen. But that cap there is quite wide. The next pen inked up this week is the Danny Trio, and it's the Moonlit Grass. It's a Takumi uh, model. 
you have the beautiful grass here on the back end of the pen uh, and you can feel the texture on this and then you have a Arushi uh, clip there and then you have some writing and then the moon as well so uh, essentially this is the moonlit grass uh, it's a great model um, it doesn't have a uh, um, clutch or spring loaded cap in a cap it does have a number six size fireball nib it's a fine nib on this uh, you've got the artist signature there and also some little popcorn stars. Again, it's a cartridge converter. But again, although you can post this cap, I don't like posting it because I can feel all of the, the grass there on the pen. And you can also, uh, you see that there are threads in there. So those threads, when you post it, are scratching uh, the grass if you were to post that cap. So... That's a reason why I typically don't post a lot of my pens because they are, a lot of my pens are expensive pens. Uh, I'm getting more Arushi pens in my collection and I just wouldn't want to, to um, uh, mar that finish. The next pen here is um, a Mr. Cypress pen and I have to say I fell in love with this when I saw it. Um, it is uh, called Maple in the Woods. Uh, I call it the Maple Leaf. Uh, it was the last pen that they had available. Uh, I don't think they will get any more. My my very small um, or short-lived um, look at Mr. Cypress is that they typically have, make four or five in each design, or their artisans do. And then once they're sold out, they're sold out, and they don't seem to come back in stock. So I think the artisans probably get a little bit bored making too many of the pens. So they, they probably make five or so pens at, at a time. Uh, I really like this design. Uh, I love the maple leaves. Uh, it's got some black there. Uh, there's a lot of texture. Um, that, although it's a, a Rushi lacquered, there is a lot of texture there. It's not, uh, so you can feel it. it. It's not to a gloss like finish, like polish. You, you could definitely see the, the light reflecting on the black areas there, but it's not like maybe uh, the, the Danny Trio here. Um, it has a very glittery section, a number six Mr. Cypress nib, uh, 14 cat gold medium nib, and I believe these are can white nibs from uh, India, and uh, I'd have to say that uh, I have uh, one, two, three, four, five of these uh, in the Mr. Cypress nibs, and I think two came a little bit scratchy um, and needed a, a, a little bit of um, micro mesh and also um, to increase the uh, ink flow because they wrote a little dry. Uh, the other three, though, have been perfect. Uh, I've not had a single problem. They write perfect out of the box. And look at that. You can see I have written this one dry. I just finished writing a letter with this one. And I did wonder whether or not I was going to run out of ink, and uh, I, I haven't. Um, you can't post the, the cap. It's not designed to do so there. Uh, and uh, I it's not an issue for me. I don't mind if I can't post the cap. The only time I want to post the cap is if I have a small pen like this, or a thinner pen, or a shorter pen. So this is a, a Mr. Cypress, and this is the uh, Orchard Tree Val B. Um, I, I call it the, uh, it's not orchard, it's orchid, orchid tree, uh, Val B. And I, I, I call it the the uh, orchid leaves, because uh, it is essentially orchid leaves. But you can see there the, the gold imprint of those leaves. They, I believe, uh, coat the leaves in paint uh, and then apply them to uh, the uh, body here and uh, to get that imprint. And it's already over an Akatamanuri with gold dust. Beautiful, beautiful pen. And uh, it does get a little bit thinner down to the uh, end cap here. Uh, but uh, there's a good reason for that, and I'll show you. It does allow you to post the cap. Um, it won't post that deeply, but it will post fairly securely. Uh, so this is a, a pen that I might try and post a little bit. It's not short in my hand, but it's shorter and it's thinner and uh, it does have a, a number six size mr cypress 14 karat gold nib on it 
Uh, but for, for these types of pens, like, I can get away writing with this quite happily. Uh, but I don't know. I, I do feel that maybe having that there. I, I think the, the other reason why I don't like closing my caps is that let's say I were to move uh, my hand a bit. Sometimes the cap will just fall off. Uh, not on this pen necessarily, but on, on other pens. So that's, I think, probably another reason why I don't uh, post my caps. Uh, it's just something, I think, we all do things for various reasons, and I just find that most of the time I do not need to post my caps. But there are some pens that I will gravitate towards to post those caps and and be more than happy to post the caps with. So there you have it, that's my 10 pens currently inked for this week. I think let's now go and do a writing sample. So the first pen here is the Anoto Magna Classic in the Chased Green, or sometimes it's referred to as Jade. Uh, and I know I have uh, on my earlier videos, and I think the unboxing review uh, mentioned it as the Jade. So we're doing ink swatch here. And it's a lovely wet writing nib. So this is the Anoto Magna Classic Chased Green or Jade. And uh, it is a uh, medium, uh, four, uh, sorry, 18 carat gold nib. And uh, the ink in here is uh, Diamine Meadow. And I'd be interested to hear what your feelings are between 14 and 18 karat gold nibs. I typically don't normally see a lot of difference. Um, if, if I were to be able to have two pens with a 14 or 18 karat gold nib, what would I go for if the price was the same? Uh, most of the time, I'd probably go for the 18 karat gold nib. Uh, it has slightly more gold content in it, but it may or may not be slightly more rigid. Um, so I'd be interested to hear what uh, what your preference is. Would you prefer a 14 karat gold nib or an 18 karat gold nib? The next pen here is again another Anoto Magna Classic, but it's in the Chased Amber this time. And we'll do an ink swatch. And I'm just having a look. This one, yeah, was empty. So I am going to have to uh, ink that one up now. So now that I've re-inked this pen, I did that off camera. And uh, you can see there, it's a nice, nice color. So this is the Anoto. Magna Classic uh, Chased Amber and uh, again it's a, a medium nib on this one and it's an 18 cat gold um, I don't believe uh, Noto actually do 14 cat gold nibs or at least not at the moment um, they are Bach made nibs so in theory uh, they probably could get 14 karat gold nibs, but uh, they, at the moment, stick with 18 karat gold. And then the uh, ink in here is Herban, or J Herban, and it's Amber uh, de Bermany. And uh, this is uh, quite a nice autumn coloured ink. I have another pen inked up with that ink uh, this week as well. So the next pen is the Anoto Magna Classic in the Colt Pen's Christmas Carol. And we'll do an ink swatch here. I just did have to refill this one because, as you'll probably recall, this uh, cartridge converter was also uh, pretty empty. It was running on fumes. So this is the Anoto. Uh, I'm just going to say Colt Pen's uh, Christmas Carol. And uh, it's a, a broad uh, steel nib. Um, and the steel nibs from uh, Anoto are Yovo, not Bok. 
Uh, used to be Bulk, but for the last few years they've been Yovo. Uh, and then the ink in here is um, the uh, Vinta, um, and it's um, get the name right on this Whiskey Gold, uh, which also is a, a Colt Pens exclusive. So uh, that is a beautiful gold shimmer ink. Uh, one I am loving a lot. Um, and maybe I, I should try and uh, check out Diamond Shimmertastic uh, Golden Sands again. Uh, I do have that in my collection. I just haven't written with it for several years. The next pen is the Tweeko Seishu Dragon in red. We'll do an ink swatch. And I really love this red. Um, I, I I panicked uh, about a month ago because I thought I need to get more bottles of this because this is the uh, London Pen Show exclusive ink. And I thought I need to get many more bottles of this because I like this ink. But then I realized it wasn't that ink. And it's a run of the mill ink from KWZ. So I ordered a few more bottles. Um, so this is the uh, Tweeko. Seishu Dragon in red. Uh, it's uh, a medium and it's a 14 cat gold nib. Uh, and then the ink in here is a KWZ Thief's Red. Uh, so it is uh, one where you can get it uh, at any retailer if you want. Uh, well, say any retailer, any retailer that that probably stocks KWZ inks, but it's a beautiful red ink. I do also like KWZ Beef Eater Red, which is the London Pen Show exclusive. The next pen inked up is a Tweeko Seishu Dragon in green. So we'll do uh, an ink swatch here. And this, again, is a beautiful green, and have to say, I'm really, really liking this green. And I am just going to have to double check, because I'm not 100% sure what green it was. There's one or two. Okay, yeah. It's another KWZ uh, <laughs> ink. So, uh, it's a Tweeko Seishu uh, Dragon in green and a uh, medium 14 cat gold nib again uh, and then the ink is kwz uh, grass green which is uh, a nice uh, colored ink and of course as i had a kwz in the red dragon i, I would have put a kwz in the green dragon because uh, I know that I, I had bought the two inks at the same time. The next pen inked up is the Danny Trio Ancient Dragon on Higher Tan. So we'll do uh, an ink swatch here. And again, this is a nice uh, red. I am liking this a lot. So this is uh, the uh, Danny Trio, uh, Ancient Dragon, and uh, it's on Hyotan, and it's uh, a medium, and it's uh, an 18 count gold nib, and uh, the ink uh, in here is um, Diamine. Poppy Red, which, which is a nice vibrant poppy. Uh, it is uh, a, an ink that I like a lot uh, in terms of the, the colour and shading. The next pen inked up is the Danny Trio Moonlit Grass. So we'll do an ink swatch here. And... This is a, a nice red ink as well. So this is the Danny Trio uh, Moonlit Grass. 
Uh, it's a fine, um, and it's an 18 cat gold nib. Uh, and then the uh, ink in here is uh, KWZ uh, Beef Eater Red. But that uh, it is also a uh, nice uh, darker red ink. The next pen inked up is the Mr. Cypress, and this is the Maple in the Woods. So we'll do an ink swatch. And uh, this is the other pen that I had this inked up with uh, the ink, um, which you'll see here. Um, we'll just finish the uh, ink swatch off. So this is the Mr. Cypress. And uh, it's the Maple in the Woods. Uh, and it's a medium and it's a 14 cat gold nib and uh, the ink in here is the same ink Herben uh, Ambre de Bermany and uh, this uh, is a uh, nice autumn colored ink and it's one I'm going to be using a lot uh, I think this autumn Although typically I don't normally stick to uh, seasonal colours. Um, more lately I've not been using maybe massive amounts of green or orange or yellow in summer months. And then the last pen inked up is this one. It's a Mr. Cypress and it's the Orchid Tree Val B. So we'll do uh, an ink swatch here. And you can see it's actually, um, it's a little bit of a, a drier ink, this one. So this is Mr. Cypress, uh, and it's the uh, orchid tree, uh, Val B, uh, and it's a medium, and it's a uh, 14 count gold uh, nib. And uh, the ink in here is uh, Venustus. And it is uh, uh, Rosa Canina. Which uh, is, is a very nice red ink. And one I probably need to use a little bit more. Although maybe in a slightly wetter pen, broader pen nib. So I think let's take a look at these uh, pens inked up one more time. We have an Anoto uh, Magna Classic in the Chase Green in a medium 18 cat gold nib inked up with Diamine Meadow. We have an Anoto Magna Classic in the Chase Amber in a medium 18 cat gold nib inked up with Herban Amber de Bermany. And I do like how this looks in a broad nib. Uh, we have an Anoto Colt Pens Christmas Cow in a broad steel nib inked up with Vinter Whiskey Gold. We have a Tweeko Soshu Dragon in red in a medium 14 count gold nib inked up with KWZ Thief's Red. We have a Tweeko Soshu Dragon in green in a medium 14 count gold nib inked up with KWZ Grass Green. Uh, we have a Danny Trio and this is the Ancient Dragon on higher tan in a medium 18 count gold nib uh, inked up with Diamine Poppy Red. We have a Danny Trio Moonlit Grass in a fine 18 count gold nib inked up with KWZ Beef Eater Red. We have a Mr. Cypress Maple in the Woods in a medium 14 count gold nib inked up with Herban Amber de Bermany. And then we have a Mr. Cypress Orchid Tree Val B in a medium 14 count gold nib inked up with Venvustus Rosa Canina. So there you have it. That's my Coney Ink pens for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye-bye.